Welcome to Champions Heart. You can't play boxing. Featuring boxing addict Johnny Farace and friends from super fans to superstars. Let's roll. Boxing fans, today I have a great one for you. Today is August 17th, and I'm joined by a Hall of Fame publicist from 15rounds.com, Mr. Mark Abrams. What's happening, Johnny? What's going on? Man, rock and rolling down here in Florida. How's everybody in Philly? Everything's good in Philly. Uh, let me adjust my hat here. Uh, everything's good. Um, obviously, uh, just you know, same pattern. We've been in for about five months now, so uh, <laughs> yeah. We're just, we're just looking. We we're just looking to get back in the swing of things. Hopefully, sometime soon. Yes, sir. It's like Groundhog Day every day for us, right? I hear that. Yes, sir. All right, let's get right at it. The top trending thing right now in boxing world is Rolando Romero versus Jackson Martinez fight and the decision there afterwards. Give me your thoughts on it. Me, like everyone else, I thought Marina's won the fight. And, you know, Romero came in with all that talking about it. You know, he's going to score the most vicious knockout in the history of boxing. You know, really didn't live up to me. In fact, he looked very, uh, very raw in there, very crude, and didn't have a lot going on. How some judge gave him 10 rounds. I'll, you know, Frank Lombardi, I guess, was the judge. I'll never understand that, but uh, I guess uh, I hate using this uh, phrase, but that's boxing for you. That's boxing for you. And, yeah, you know, he depended on his power the whole fight. It was just looking yes. for his counterpunch. He got outboxed. He got outsmarted. He got yep. outworked. And yep. unfortunately for Jackson uh, Martinez, he's walking away without, uh, uh, you know, without the win in that fight. Correct. And, and that was for some interim title fight and, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, comes with that. But, uh, you know, he, with, with a win, it would have got him in position for a bigger fight. Something tells me there may be a rematch uh, of this fight at some point, you know, maybe next. Right. Apparently, Floyd has already has already made mention that there will be an immediate rematch. Right, well, I, I didn't see that, but if, yeah. if Romero's own promoter wants the rematch, yeah. they'll make they'll make it happen. They'll definitely make it happen. He better come with a different fight, though. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So also that um, on the same card, David Benavidez uh, makes somewhat easy work of Romar Angulo. Um. Obviously, the big story. Well, actually, wasn't even the fight. Was what happened before the fight. Benavides misses weight by two and a half pounds. He's blaming mm. it by you know not being able to use a sauna or a bathtub. Well, you know what, David? Everyone on the card had the same things going on. So you should have been a little bit more. Uh, you know, obviously, it's a different times and fighting these bubble atmospheres. You're not going to have the same amount of preparation, especially fight week, than you're normally. Uh, um, than you're normally accustomed to. Hopefully, it was just a blip on the radar screen where he will be able to come back and fight at 168 pounds. I know everyone wants to see a fight with Caleb Plant, but if I'm Plant right now, I mean, Benavides, you know, he's a good fighter and everything, but what does Benavides bring to the table? He doesn't have that title anymore. So um, right. with the WBC, let's we'll see what they do. Maybe they put Benavides back in a, a, a vacant title fight. I know the, the winner of that fight was supposed to fight uh, Yild, Yildrim, but he may not be able to get into the country because of everything going on. So that may open the door back up for Benavides to, to maybe fight for a vacant title again. Uh, that's a shame. It's a shame he let it go on the scale. It gets under my skin so bad. Professionals, you know, bubble, no bubble. I don't care. You had the well, date set for a while. No, no, you got to be know, on point. I would say, you know, between, like, say, UFC fights and, and boxing matches, I would say about 97% of the guys and girls have made weight. You know, there's been some instances where guys and girls have been over. But I'd say for the most part, just about everyone's been on weight for all these cards. So, right. um, right. you know, uh, so as a world champion, he actually should be held to a, a higher, uh, you know, uh, a higher level there uh, in terms of uh, being able to, to, to make the weight. Right, and he even admitted afterwards, after the fight, he was like, yeah, my, be, my nutrition was not on point, meaning obviously he was, uh, you know, following his nutritional guide and not being where he needs to be, and it's a damn shame. I'll tell, tell, tell you what, Dave, if you have to have those Snicker bars or, you know, those peanut M&Ms, stay off and give them to the me. <laughs> dang, 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 yes, sir. Also on that card, another uh, Pennsylvania fighter, Travis Kaufman, was in tough against Big Otto Whalen. Wallen? Whalen? Yeah, Wallen? Uh, obviously I've worked with Travis and his father for 
close to a decade now is pretty, uh, you know, pretty tough to watch as I've yeah. actually in the last couple of weeks, I've been taking Travis around uh, in terms of getting him a lot of interviews uh, in, in advance of this fight. And, you know, it's a shame what happened to him. Uh, you know, he, he had the shoulder problems coming in. He thought they were all, you know, cleared up. And uh, I think early in the fight, he started feeling it. And then that fifth round is when it really popped out. And, mm. you know, he, you know, uh, he b- b- hot soft to Otto Wallin. And he, uh, you know, he's going to be a, a, a name in the heavyweight division. I don't know about force or contender. Whatever. He's a name, though, to, to, that will be involved with, with some fights, with, with some good fighters. Uh, over the next couple of years, he proved that he could hang in there with Tyson Fury. The other night, he kind of uh, exclamated that. If that's even a word, exclamated. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, uh, so, Fact, you know, check that for you. Uh, so, like I said, uh, I think he will be involved in, you know, fights against some of the more known heavyweights uh, going forward. Awesome. He had mentioned looking immediately for a rematch with Tyson Fury. And, you know, he gave Tyson- no, that's that's. I mean, Fury's Fury. I mean, before you, I mean, I'm sorry to cut you off, but Fury's got the rematch of Wilder. He's got a supposed two fight deal with uh, Anthony Joshua. There's Dillian White on the horizon. So yeah, I mean, if, if Valine continues to win another three, four fights and establishes himself as maybe the number one contender in terms of whether it's against, uh, you know, you know, with Fury and Joshua and Dillian White and uh, Pulev, uh, you know, who is going to fight Anthony Joshua. If um, yeah. Valine, you know, wins two, three fights, whatever, while all, the, all that other uh, stuff is shaking out, then, yeah, he, he, I think he would be deserving of a world title shot. Man, looking at all of what you just said, man, the heavyweight division is looking pretty uh, deep. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's there's definitely uh, stuff to be had. And uh, she's a big fight this weekend with um, with yeah. uh, Dillian White and Povetkin. And, uh, you know, a, a real bona fide contender will come out of that fight. Right, 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 right on, right on, right on. Your call early in the day over in London. We saw uh, both Carl Frampton and Michael Conlon in action. Uh, first of all, Conlon, what'd you take from his performance against Sofane Tukac? Not much. Not much. I mean, mm-hmm. I've, you know, I've seen Conlon fight a few times in person. You know, I think, uh, you know, obviously he had has the amateur stuff with the Olympics and the finger and all that stuff. And right, right. That's, it's, a, it's a cute story and everything. But I, I, I you know, he, he, you know he's, he's a good talent, but I haven't seen anything dynamic out of him yet. Still may right. come. You know, he's moved down right. 122 pounds and see how he, he shakes out there. And, uh, you know, may- maybe 122, we'll see a lot more from Michael Conlon. Frampton did what he had to do, got got a late replacement out there, I believe the seventh round, the mm-hmm. trainer. Now, um, yep. should Jamel Herring win on uh, September 5th, there's going to be a nice showdown, be a real good style, uh, listic uh, uh, match there with Herring, who's a tall, long boxer. Uh, taking on Frampton, guy who likes to, you know, to to kind of be the, he's that quintessential boxer puncher, likes to get on side, mix it up a little bit. So uh, let's hope that Jamel not only, uh, you know, first he, you know, he gets the fight, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. with all these COVID tests and was he positive, what, you know, gets the fight right. and he puts on a good performance and uh, we'll see that fight in a couple months. Right on. Well, who, who do you call? What's your call on that fight? Well, let me see what Herring looks like, but. We'll see. Well, I mean, we'll hold it. I'll hold out my prediction. I might lean towards Herring, but I'm not sure yet. Right, right. Also, big, huge, gigantic news in the female boxing world. Wow, Jessica McCaskill beat Cecilia Bracus, the pound for pound queen forever in the uh, in, in well in the welterweight division, but in boxing itself. <coughs> What did you take from um, that fight? Yeah, it was good. I mean, I, I haven't watched the whole fight. I've seen some snippets of it. McCaskill. Right. She she gave it her gave it her all. She uh, was the aggressor in the fight, and she uh, she did a hell of a job to knock off the long reigning uh, pound for pound. I, I'll say a queen a, a boxing. I don't know, you know, uh, she Breakus hasn't had not done anything to lose that status. I know where you're going with this, maybe right. uh, Clarissa Shields or someone like that. But no, Breakus she was the 
she was the girl until she loses she's not so maybe if you want to you want to put um Clarissa up there now yeah he, sure he can do it and you know McCaskill's got a great story she I believe she was homeless and stuff yes. grown out she went to college graduated turned her whole life around and now she's the undisputed she she actually has six world titles now yeah junior Obviously, welterweight and yeah, she's she got 240 and four to 147 so Ooh, uh yeah. props we, to her we, we, we i've seen you know we've seen a couple fighters bernard hopkins and terence crawford and maybe one or two others claim all the belts in one division but she has four in one division two in wow. another so that, that wow. that's, that's a great tip of the hat for jessica mccaskill absolutely congrats to the champ who do you see her facing next we're I don't, I don't, you know, I haven't thought that far ahead. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, with with them fighting on the zone, obviously, there's a fight this weekend between Katie Taylor and Delphine Persoon, a, a rematch of a great fight from last June. So maybe the winner of that fight will becomes a, a big fight. Yeah. Also on the undercard of the Brett Coos fight um, was a, a couple of great fighters from the, the 2016 Olympians, uh, from the Olympics, rather. From um, Madrimov and Jake Jayasev, right? Yeah. Israel I, Madrimov, man, him against Eric Walker. And Eric Walker, I thought, was doing fairly decent until he wasn't, you know? Again, uh, again I'm sorry. Finish your sentence. And I was about to say, you know, and also Madrimov got robbed of a, of a knockdown late in the fight where he landed that shot clean. That I and, saw. I, like I said, I'm going to watch that whole show today. Obviously, I was covering the Showtime fights <clears throat> on... Um, on show, you know, off of Showtime. Then I wanted to watch the zone fights right after, but it hadn't loaded in the zone on, for my TV. So I wanted to watch them all in one night. So I'm going to watch those today and be able to comment more on those. Um, it, 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 the Dream Off is an exceptional talent, uh, and Jaius have knocked out a, a journeyman fighter. I, I actually interviewed Eric Walker uh, last week, a very impressive young man who turned his life around. And, you know, I was pulling for him a little bit. He uh, gave, gave, me, gave me a terrific interview. And, uh, nice. you know, uh, he's a guy. Um, but Dream Off, obviously, he's being groomed for bigger and better things. But, uh, you know, Walker uh, proved the other night. And I heard he, you know, took a few extra punches in the last couple rounds after he should have been knocked out. Yes. So hopefully he's able to come back strong and, you know, get some, get some more opportunities as well. Yeah, well, yeah, I believe he will get extra opportunities. He made a lot of fans, too, because yeah. he showed a lot of heart in that fight. It was mm -hmm. a great fight for him. Um, also, this weekend um, in New Hampshire, yeah, I'd just like to give props to uh, Mark DeLuca, who fought this weekend in New Hampshire um, at Southpaw Boxing and Fitness. You know anything about that show? No, I saw the DeLuca. I think he won, correct? He did. He did. I yeah. think it was third or fourth round. Yeah, KO. I saw the result. Second That's, round, KO. I, yeah, I really haven't, didn't really pay much attention to that. All right, all right. And, and wheeling it back just to last Saturday, just because it be you know, uh, Jamal James uh, won the uh, WBA, I guess, uh, interim title. Yeah, yeah. The he's an interesting He's an interesting contender. I don't know if he's beaten Crawford, Spence, Porter, Garcia, any of those type of guys. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he's an interesting contender. He's built himself up, uh, you know, especially since the loss to Hernandez Ugas. Uh, I've actually met James a few years ago. He fought on some shows that I worked in Bethlehem, PA. He's an impressive young man for what he does in his community in Minneapolis, which ironically, you know, obviously was the center of a lot of uh, the unrest due to the, the George Floyd, uh, you know, uh, uh, unfortunate circumstances around George Floyd. And he, he actually has been doing stuff and mentoring mentoring kids in that neighborhood for a long time now. I mean, for at least four or five years since I've known about him. So uh, he's an impressive young man in the, at six foot one, six foot two almost. He's an interesting contender uh, in the welterweight division. Yeah, he is. He is. He's, he's a great guy, too. I had the chance of meeting him in 2008 when he was yet an amateur. We both fought at 2008 Ringside World Championships. I met him for about mm, two minutes. <laughs> Very nice guy, though. Very yes. cool dude. Right on. All right. Well, we have some uh, good boxing upcoming this weekend as well. Speaking of Sean Porter, he's back in action. Uh, Fighting a guy named Sebastian Formella, who I'm not really familiar with. I believe he's undefeated. But this seems like, uh, you know, an interesting, not interesting, but seems like a, uh, a, a, a fight for Sean Porter to kind of get healthy coming off the, uh, not the win, but the, the great fight he had with Errol Spence back in September. So this is a, seems to me like a showcase kind of fight for him. So uh, look for him to do big things on Saturday night. 
That'll be fun. That'll be fun to watch. Um, also, Joey Spencer, Michigan's Joey Spencer. I, I believe he has a lot to prove yet. Yeah, 19 years old. I think he's 19 now. Yeah, he's um, young. Uh, he fought on a card I worked in January in Philadelphia. Impressive kid, uh, good family. Uh, you know, again, high expectations are, are, are set for him. And, you know, uh, some of the fights he's looked better than others. But, you know, like young kids, you know, I, I try not to really judge them until they hit 20, 21. You know, when they turn pro at 17 or 18, I want to give them some time to really grow into their strength and, mm -hmm. and, and so forth to, to really pass a, 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 a good judgment on fighters like that. But yeah, there's definitely some ability there. Right well, he's been getting a lot of airplay. He's been getting a lot of TV time. And, and again, now on Fox. So yes. he's definitely going to be shown. And also Sebastian Fundora is going to score up with could, Nathan could, could, uh, be good, could be a good scrap, fight for right? Fundora, who's about six foot seven at 154 pounds. For some reason, he <laughs> fights like he's five foot seven. He likes to right. mix it. Yeah. And Gallimore can punch. Gallimore showed a ton of heart in his loss to Erickson Lubin uh, back, uh, I believe, uh, I believe that fight was in October of last year. So uh, it's it, it could, that could be a very um, crowd-pleasing fight as the co-feature Saturday night to uh, Sean Porter's fight. Excellent. And again, on Fox. So check that out on Fox. Earlier in the day in England, as you mentioned before, Dylan White, Alexander Povetkin. This fight's been long coming. Mm -hmm. um, what's your prediction? I like Dylan White maybe by knockout in that fight. And obviously the co-feature we mentioned before with Katie Taylor and Delphine Pursun. Should be another interesting fight. I, I I think I like Taylor with a little bit of, you know, being at home, being in the United Kingdom to, to you know, on the on the scoreboard, make it two and zero against Pursuit. Right, that was a tough fight the first time out. Correct. Give props to her uh, for giving and, her the. <clears throat> and most people thought Pursuit won that fight. Yeah, I agree. I, I I did a little bit to be honest with you, and I give props to Katie Taylor for giving her the rematch right away. Yeah. That that's pretty big. You know, you don't. You, not always do you see that. Um. Also on um on Saturday on ESPN Plus, Alvarez versus Joe Smith, light heavyweights. Elder Alvarez. Mm -hmm. Um. What do you take of that? Match up there. I, I talked. I interviewed Joe Smith yesterday, and I spoke with him. And you know, he he he's got a lot of confidence. He believes he's the best light heavyweight in the world. So, uh, you know, when you have a guy that confident, um, you have to watch out for him. I just think Alvarez may may have one or two more skills than maybe Smith does. But would not surprise me if Smith catches Alvarez and, and stops him. But he, all things being equal, I, I, I'm leaning toward Alvarez. Excellent. Rob Brandt, tough Rob Brandt, in with uh, Kopilenko, Vitaly Kopilenko. Yeah, he used to fight for... Middleweights. Yeah, Kopilenko used to fight for uh, Banner Promotions, who I work for. Uh, let's see, Brandt, Brand, you know, was a, was a world champion, beat Mur Murata, then he got, got drilled in the rematch. So we'll have kids to see how, what he looks like coming off that, that, that bad knockout loss. Right on. And the most successful fighter of 2020, Clay Collard. Yeah. Back uh, in action. Back in action. So it'll be exciting to see on Saturday as well. Yeah, he's getting he's getting to spend a little time on the A side now after you know <coughs> yep. cutting his teeth on the B side there and good on him too. Also, um, actually, I'm going to back up to Friday night um, in Spain, not televised, but Sergio Martinez is coming back six years after his last Dakota. Uh, I mean, obviously, he's in there with a the guy. He probably will blow out, but. Right. You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I was at his fight against Miguel Cotto, and he, he looked, you know, broken down in that fight. So six, the six years layoff can't. Has it been six years? Yeah, it can't uh, be 2014 six years. Cotto. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, You've been in COVID they, for almost a year. Yeah, they, they, six, six months. Years, I don't, I don't think you get any, any better with a six-year layoff. But you know, I'm yeah. sure he'll do okay on on Friday night. Yeah, and he'll sell tickets, and his fans that love him, and they, they do love him there. You know, he's going to be in Spain, but, the, you know, mm -hmm. in that area. Uh, I got a Telemundo show on Friday night from Kissimmee, Florida. Yeah, I have a fighter that um, split team management just signed, Omar Rosario. Just It was announced probably 10, 15, 20 minutes ago, signed with top rank. So that, I'd be interested. I'm interested in watching him fight on that card. Nice. That, that, that's a, a top rank card? Uh, top rank, Telemundo? I think, is putting a couple guys on some of these Telemundo shows. Uh huh. Uh huh. I think, I think, I think uh, Xander Zayas is fighting. Yes. Next week. 
Uh, the so, 2nd, September 2nd. September 2nd. Yep. Okay. As is Blake Davis. We'll be there on that go. card as well. Yeah. Hey, this, yeah. Isn't, it, isn't it your business partner? It is. Bad <laughs> promotions. Bad Blake Davis. He's, yeah. So he's going out as an independent fighter right now and just, you know, and doing what he can while we got COVID going on. And, um, yeah. So, um, also, so even moving beyond that, some big fights that are coming up. You got uh, the 29th, uh, Jose Ramirez and Victor Postal, which I'm really looking forward to that scrap. It's about, time, it's about the fifth time they're trying to make that fight. Uh, I like yeah. Ramirez. I like Ramirez, you know, pretty handily in that fight. Yeah. You got um, on the 26th, you got the Charlo Brothers split show. September 26th. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's going to be, I think we'll, you know, as we get closer, we'll probably dive more into that. But yep. they announced yep. that they're going to, it's going to be uh, six, seven fights, uh, you know, for the price of one uh, for this pay-per-view on September 26th. So that should be a real fun night of boxing. It's one that I call those uh, uh, two pizza nights. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, you order a couple of pizzas, you, you know, you get some snacks and for about six, seven hours that you're in for some good fights. So uh, Love it. Love it. Two pizza night on the 26th. That's what's up. Um, then October 17th, looks like they nailed it down. Lomachenko Lopez, it's going to happen. Well, that's going to be on ESPN, so I think that's a one pizza night. So uh, right, 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 yeah, right, right. I mean, that's going to be on ESPN. It's, it's great that the fight's going to be on right all over the air ESPN. Hopefully, a huge audience turns in. I mean, this is a pay per view worthy right. fight. So right. hopefully, without paying the seventy bucks, uh, fans will really gravitate towards this fight. And you know, especially if Lopez wins, maybe maybe we can finally get another crossover star in boxing. There you go. I love it. And you know, um, before the fight, too, I'm going to see if we can't get a three-way interview in, uh, with Tio. We'll all get on and have a good chat with them. Obviously, we'll sure. dive more into that as it comes up as well. Sure. So, yeah. And then, uh, you know, more in the future, uh, beyond that, the 24th, Javante Davis, Leo Santa Cruz. Pay-per-view night. <clears throat> Pay-per-view. Yeah, I, I, I like Davis big in that fight. November um, 21st, uh, Spence and Garcia. More pay-per-view action. More so. pay-per-view. And then uh, the 28th, Tyson Jones was moved off to the 28th. Help them promote that more, which I like that move myself. Uh, I think they both deserve to uh, at least get a little more publicity out of it and make it the best they can. It's their last hurrah. Um, I don't know what Jones is thinking, though. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm not trying not to really, really think about it. Right on. So, you know, overall with COVID, man, there's a lot of boxing. It's a huge weekend pass that we just had. It was great boxing, got great boxing coming up. Everybody's doing great, but I got to ask, man, uh, Golden Boy, they really haven't done much. You know, I mean, I know they agreed in principle with Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell coming well, they, well, up. But... Well, 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 no, well, they did the show a few weeks ago with um, uh, with Virgil Ortiz, and then uh, they got another show coming up August 28th. Uh, they lost the half the main event with Jorge Linares and Fortuna. Yep. I think they're trying to keep Fortuna on. So uh, I've interviewed quite a few guys and uh, uh, quite a few guys on the card: Rashidi Ellis, Alexis Rocha. Um, so a couple guys. I'm supposed to speak with Marlon Esparza this week. Nice. So yeah, I mean they're I mean they're doing what they can, and you know, right. Uh, right. you know they, they they've you know, hopefully do a show, at least one show a month and uh, just keep the train moving a little bit. Keep the train moving. I love that these fights are, you know, boxing is finally kind of has a little bit more of an upper hand to the other sports right now in the world because, you know, it only takes a few people to make it happen. So, yeah. uh, they're, you know, they're doing great. I, I really love seeing all the boxing um, that's coming up. So, all right, man, I'm going to wrap up. All right, fun question on the way out. I want to know what your top three boxing movies are. Well, since I'm from Philadelphia, how about Rocky 1, 2, and 3? <laughs> I love it. Love it, love yeah, it, I mean, love it. I'm a big Rocky guy. What, what, yeah. what can I say? Yeah. Not the five box. though. Not not five. The one with Tommy Morrison. Uh, right. That wasn't great. The Ante the one with Antonio Tarver. Eh. Right, right. But you take those like you know your cousin that you, you know, whatever. But you gotta accept them. One, accept two, them. and three. Rocky, Rocky one, Rocky two are phenomenal. Love it. Yes, they were. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, speaking of other sports, I know you, you you do a lot of other sports commentating. Football, uh, how's football coming along? Are they, you know, we should be mid preseason right now. And not well, the, the NFL camps is actually open today for actually on the field hitting and stuff. So that's yeah. something today. Yeah. College football, I don't know if they're going to play this year. You know, just about all the conferences have you know, suspended uh, operations until the fall, until, until the Brains, but we'll see the NFL is going to try to play. So, I mean, that's, that's going to happen. Yeah. All right. 
All right, my man. All right, dude. I appreciate you uh, as always coming talk to the box. Can't play Anytime, boxing. Anytime, Johnny. Anytime, right on, my Johnny. man. We'll chat again next week. All right. Thank you. Dream big, live large, love life, my friend. Yeah. All right. Good job.